believe today is the day of the big presentation and we're probably going to miss it. I just wish we would have listened instead of mixing all those chemicals together. Look, sure, we caused a science experiment to nearly destroy the science building, but there's nothing we can do about it now, and we don't really have enough time to earn extra money to help pay for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, our only chance is to... Is to make Dean Sims like us by finishing the job that he gave us here at Mr. Thomas's house. Yeah. But even if we finish the attic today, there's no guarantee he's going to let us near the school or even the big presentation. So how are we going to meet the famous mystery guest now? Oh, Mike, we have to at least try to finish cleaning the attic, you know, to make things right with Dean Sims. I mean, remember, the presentation is this afternoon, remember? Yeah, I do remember. I just hope we can do it. I've been so worried, you know? Uh, I haven't even been able to read Mr. Thomas's comics book that he let me borrow. <laughs> you are worried. Oh, I'm right there with you, bro. Uh, It usually comes by now. Uh, maybe we can just... Hello? Mr. Thomas? Mr. Thomas? Are you in there? Let's just go in. Let's Come on, let's go in. Let's see. Go on, Andrew. Hello? Mr. Thomas? Mr. Thomas? Mr. Hello, you here? Hey, hey, check it out, here's a note. Dear Mike and Steve, sorry I couldn't be here to eat breakfast with you. I've got some important work that needs my attention. Breakfast is on the table for you. Have fun cleaning the attic, Mr. Thomas. Hmm. Well, that was nice. He left us breakfast. That's very, very true. Yeah. Okay, well, let's eat breakfast. Worrying makes me hungry. Yeah. All right. Let me pray. Okay. Dear God, allow Mike and I to clean the attic really, really fast today and allow us to make wise decisions so we don't, you know, run into any more bad mistakes like we've done in the past. And, you know, take care of uh, Mr. Thomas wherever he may be. Amen. Amen. I'm not gonna lie to you, Mike. I mean, we're, we're up against the wall here. If we're gonna have any chance at, you know, clean... Mike! Mike, are you uh, listening? Yes, I'm listening. <sighs> Like I was saying, if we're gonna have any chance at cleaning the attic, we need to really get on the ball. I mean, the presentation is today. Today, Mike. Got it. Right. Well, you know what I'm thinking is we should not read. We should not read the Bible if we're gonna have any chance at finishing the attic. No, we have to read the Bible today. Jesus just got arrested, remember? Yeah. We have to find out what happens to him. Listen, I want to find out too, but we're not going to have any chance at cleaning the attic. We can always come back tomorrow and visit Mr. Thomas and finish reading the Bible then. I mean, I just hope it will be enough, you know? Okay, we'll do it your way. Though I'm not a big fan of it, I really want to find out what happens to Jesus. I, I do too, Mike, but not today. We're not going to find out today, but some other day. Now, let's get busy, okay? Okay, okay all right. <laughs> Have you ever been given really good news? You know, like the time you got a really good grade? Or the time your family planned a trip that was fun and exciting? No matter what it is, good news is great, isn't it? Especially when it's unexpected. Like the time you thought you got a bad grade, but you got a really good one. Or the time you thought your parents were gonna make you clean your room, but instead they took you to the amusement park. Yep. Good news is best when it comes at a time when you really need it. You know my friends Mike and Steve, they could really use some good news right now. They have no idea how they're going to clean up the attic or make things right with Dean Sims. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to try their best and hope that good news comes their way. And maybe, just maybe, they'll get to go to that big presentation at their school. Now, good news is, well, good. But the best news is God's plan he had for his people and the great plan that he has to fix our broken friendship with him. You can be sure that God's plans are good and you can choose to follow his ways and experience all the good things, the good news he has planned for you. Things that you can't even imagine or think about yet. And when you do, your life becomes part of God's great story, a piece of art for everyone to see how much God loves you and the whole world. Oh, 
come down here. I gotta show you my favorite. Okay, so we're not going to read, we're going to work. I mean, we need to get this attic done. If you say so. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, look. Hey, what, what was that? I don't know, but I think, I think it means we're supposed to read it now. What do you mean we're supposed to read it now? We're supposed to get the attic done or we, we're not gonna be able to go to the presentation. You know, the one with the famous mystery guest. That's today, Mike. Today, okay? Now we probably won't have any time. Now get busy. Okay. Oh, um, Steve, <laughs> the Bible, it's God's word, right? So maybe uh, he wants us to read it now instead of clean? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, fine, we'll read, but we probably won't be able to go to the presentation now. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay, we're reading. Oh, it's about <sighs> time. I have to see what happens to Jesus now. Okay, so he got arrested. Yeah, and then the Pharisees and some Roman soldiers brought Jesus before a guy named Pilate. It looks like he was the ruler at the time. And did Pilate set the Pharisees straight? Did he set Jesus free? Uh, let me see. He didn't think Jesus did anything wrong. Oh, good. Uh, but... But what? He didn't want people to be mad at him, so he let the people decide. And the Pharisees and other people there started yelling that they wanted Jesus to die on a cross. Die? They wanted Jesus dead? Yeah. How could they say that? Did they even know who he was? Mike. Who were these people anyway? Didn't they know how Jesus healed everybody and how much he said wonderful things about them? How could they want him to die? I don't know, Mike. Well, it isn't going to happen. They're not going to kill him. He just can't die. He is the son of God. It's going to be okay. The people turned against him. They spit on him. They watched as the soldiers beat him with whips. They beat him bad, Mike. Oh. They placed a wooden cross on his back, and even though he was really, really hurt, they made him carry it all the way up a hill called Calvary. I don't get it. How could people let that happen? Did anyone try to help? It looks like when the cross got too heavy and Jesus was too weak to keep carrying it up the hill, a man named Simon helped. He carried it the rest of the way. Are you sure you want me to go on? It, it looks pretty bad here. I don't want to hear it. But I have to know. Oh, it's okay. Keep going. All right. They nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross. And as Jesus was dying, he said, It is finished. Then he died. No, 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 no. The sky went dark. The earth shook. Jesus' friends were crying, and those who followed him were very sad. They took Jesus off of the cross and placed his body in a tomb. They sealed the tomb with a great stone. I just don't understand. How could Jesus go from being so loved by everyone to dying on a cross? It certainly didn't turn out the way everyone thought. I just don't get it. I mean, he's a man, but he's also God, right? Can God even die? I don't know. I didn't think it would turn out this way, though. And everything he said, everything everyone had hoped for and waited for for such a long time, hundreds of years, remember? Jesus was the savior king that God had always planned to bring. It doesn't make any sense. Unless... Unless what? Well, remember what Jesus said to the disciples before he went to Jerusalem, remember? I kind of do. Something about... Suffering. Yeah, and then he said he would have to die, remember? He said that? Oh, well, yeah, he did say that. And do you remember what he said next? He said after three days, he would come, come back, back to life. life. That's okay. right. Okay, come on, turn the page. All right, it's about to get really good. Let's see what's next. You were right. He does look alive to me. Yeah, he does. I wonder what they're looking at there. I don't know, but he is definitely alive, and I've got to find out what happens now. Yeah, come on, let's find out. Okay. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. 
the books about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ, a heart in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let it blow up all the pages, let this show go live Let his word explode from this video into your life A man named Joseph took the body of Jesus and placed it in a tomb and rolled a big stone in front of the entrance. Three days later, two women came to the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. An angel came down from heaven and rolled the big stone away and then sat on top of it. When the women saw him, they fell to the ground. The angel told the women not to be afraid and that Jesus was not there. He had come back to life just as he said he would. The angel told them to look in the tomb to see for themselves. The women ran from the tomb and told Jesus' disciples all that had happened. At first they did not believe them, but one night while the disciples were together, Jesus appeared to them. He showed them his hands where they nailed him to the cross. And when the disciples saw this, they were so happy because they knew that Jesus was alive. Jesus appeared with them for many days. And then one day, Jesus told them it was time for him to go back to heaven, but he would come back again someday. Jesus told his disciples that while he was away, they should go into the world and tell everybody how much he loves them. I'm so glad we got to the happy ending. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he's alive. I know, and I'm thinking about that last thing. What last thing? You know, that last thing Jesus said about how he's going to return someday. But in the meantime, his followers should tell the whole world about his love. Oh, yeah, he did say that. What did the disciples do? Well, they went out and told people about Jesus. How perfect, I just love happy endings. Um, uh, Mike, I don't think that's the happy ending, because uh, there's a lot more that hasn't happened yet. Mm. Ooh, 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 breakfast is ready, it's like a Pop-Tart. <laughs> what? It's not a Pop-Tart, you pickle face, it's a picture. <laughs> oh, you're wearing pickle in this picture. <laughs> oh, wait, hey, this wait. is... This is yeah, you, okay. and that's me. A switch. <laughs> This is, huh. Well, I guess you and me and everyone else are still a part of the story of the Bible. We're a part of God's story. No way. I think so. I never realized, I mean, you and me are still a part of the Bible. I mean, God's story. That must mean we're like important well, in every yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, it's our job to tell others about Jesus, uh, just like Peter, Paul, and all of the other disciples did. Wow, I gotta think about this for a sec. Okay. Let me see if I got this right. Jesus' death on the cross fixed our broken friendship with God? Yeah, I mean, it was God's plan all along. But why did he have Jesus die? I'm not sure, but you know, I remember reading about sacrifices a lot in the Old Testament. I kind of skipped over them because I didn't know they were important. But look, look, here. It, it says that Jesus was the sacrifice for our sins once and for all. Jesus chose to die to make a way for us. Yeah, he did. And then he rose again. Uh, yep, that's my favorite part. And now we get to tell the whole world about what Jesus did. We get to be a part of God's great plan. Yeah, we do, and, and God's plan never fails. Wow, well, I can't believe Jesus did that for me. Hey, for me too. Yeah, I mean, he did it for all of us. Kind of makes me want to go out and tell the world about Jesus now. Yeah. Oh no, the Bible shut. <sighs> but first, Let's finish cleaning the attic. Oh, okay. Uh, Ready, set, go! Uh, I'm already tired. Let's take a break. Uh, me too. Well, it's official, Mike. There's no way we're going to be able to finish cleaning the attic. We're out of time. Whoa, where'd you get that? Uh, shh. It came uh, out of the Bible. Oh. You know, the ceremony's going to start any second now. How are we ever going to make things right with Dean Sims? How are we going to be able to see the famous mystery guest? Hey, you know what? 
Even though we didn't finish in enough time for the presentation, I say we finish anyways, for Mr. Thomas. Yeah, for Mr. Thomas. Perfect, here we go. Oh, oh hey, I, I'm getting a text. It? It's Marcus. Oh, okay, huh. what do you say? Well, he says the famous guy is going to make a big donation to the college and that we better get there. Well, I guess you're gonna have to text him that we can't make it. I mean, we haven't finished the attic. Oh, you're right, good idea. Okay. What'd you say? Oh. Marcus says that doesn't matter. Dean Sims wants us there now. Oh, so we get to see the famous guy? I'm not sure all it says is for us to get there ASAP. ASAP? Alien should always prosper? No, Mike, as soon as possible. Oh. Come on, let's go! Okay. So what's your favorite story? Is it about pirates? Maybe knights and princesses? Have you ever secretly wished you could be a part of those stories? Well, guess what? You are a part of that story. God's story. Mike and Steve discovered that, and you can too. When you place your faith in Jesus and follow his plan for your life, you become a part of God's story of the world. How can I illustrate this? This will work perfect. You see, God's story didn't end with Jesus. God is still writing his story, and we are living in it right now. We are the church, and God wants us to tell the whole world about Jesus. The final chapters of God's big story have yet to be written, but Jesus left us with the promise that he would return one day. We can look forward to his return and know that all the adventures we have in this world are nothing compared to the adventures he has waiting for us in heaven. But for now, God's story is still being written, and you are a part of it. The Bible says it this way about you and me in 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen people. You are royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. This verse says if you believe in Jesus, you are chosen to be a part of his big story. That means God wants to use you to show other people who He is. Listen, every story has characters. You know, the hero, the knight, the princess. You and I, we're characters in God's story. Let me ask you, what kind of character will you be? Here's my prayer. My prayer for you is that you will be someone who believes in Jesus with all of your heart. Why? So God can use you to change the world and tell others about his love. God invited me into his family. Now I can go tell his big story. Thomas, we're ready for you. Oh. You ready to go? Yes, thank okay. you. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, was that your foot? Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hey, oh. check it out. It's Dean Sims. Oh. I guess we're getting Ladies started. Okay. I'd like to thank you for being here for this very special occasion today. Um, as some of you may have heard about the <clears throat> unfortunate incident in one of our science labs recently, the damage to the science building was indeed immense. That's why he wants us here. He's gonna make an example of us in front of everybody, including the mystery guest. Man, I'm out of here. Oh, sit down, sit down. Oh. That is why I'm proud to announce today that someone has generously donated money for our brand new science building. You may be wondering who our generous donor is. Well, you've probably heard of this man. He's been on just about every magazine in the country. He's sold millions of comic books. His work has been displayed in almost ma every major art gallery in the country. And I'm proud to call this man one of our alumni. But I'm even more proud to call him my son. Would you please welcome the famous comic book artist Mr. Thomas Sims. Oh. Oh. That's why those comic books were in the attic. Why did I not see that? 
Mr. Thomas is Thomas Sims. Yeah, but I, I thought Thomas was his last name, but I guess it could be his first name. <sighs> now, who's Thomas Sims? Oh, Captain Crown, my favorite comic book hero of all time. Thomas Sims is the creator of Captain Crown and a billion other comic book heroes. I've read almost all of his stuff. He's a genius. Well, 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 let me get this straight. So Mr. Thomas is Thomas Sims, comic book writer extraordinaire? Yeah, what? Thank you, son. You no know way. what it means to us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It is such an honor for me to be here. A while ago, I got together with my dad. <laughs> I mean, Dean Sims. I needed some advice. I, I had been given so much, and I just wanted an opportunity to give it back. You know, to be a part of God's great plan. So we got together to talk about where to give the money, either to the college or to some good causes. And suddenly, as you're all aware, we had this giant catastrophe in the science lab. As unfortunate as that was, it did give me an opportunity to give back. And now, it is my honor to be the first one to announce to you that the new science building is gonna be built right outside of this building. But, before the big reveal, I would like to invite a couple of my new friends to the stage. Mike, Steve, could you guys oh, come on up here oh, and give me a hand? Let's go, Mike. Oh, man. But, but you gave up everything, your house, all your money. Yeah, and you've done all this to help us clean up our mess. Why'd you do it? It's like I've always told you guys, God always has a plan. He asked me to make this change, and when God asks you to do something, well, it's, it's a, a good, good idea, idea to, to do, do it. it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thomas. I mean, Mr. Sims. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Listen, the pleasure's mine, guys. The pleasure's mine. Would you like to do the honors? <laughs> 